Let's start off by taking a tour of the brain. We're going to use the hand to build a really simplified model of the brain. And in this model, imagine that your arm is your spinal cord. Now, imagine this fleshy bit that's right under your thumb represents your survival brain. And your survival brain is that part of your brain that takes care of all the, the automatic stuff. Heart rate, digestion, wakefulness, breathing. And that's a good thing. I mean, imagine if you had to tell yourself for your heart to beat, to breathe and stuff. It would just be really tedious. Most of this stuff is, is below consciousness and below your control. But some of this stuff is kind of tweeners. Your breathing, for example, you know, up to a certain point, you can control your breathing. Uh, when my son was really young, uh, about two, three years old, he went through this period where he was like, if you don't let me do what I want to do, I'm going to hold my breath until I die. And I was like, go for it, kid. Because I knew perfectly well that even if he succeeded in holding his breath long enough, all that would eventually happen is, is that he would pass out and the survival part of the brain would go, I don't know what the crazy person is doing, but we're breathing again. So in the end, the survival brain controls the automatic stuff. If we tucked our thumb into our palm, we'd have a representation of the emotional brain. Now the emotional brain is in charge of emotions, but it's also in charge of motivation. It's where memory starts. Although stuff that the emotion brain creates is stuff that we often think of as being consciousness, most of what the emotion brain does happens before consciousness, which is kind of weird. Now, there's one particular part of the emotion brain that we want to pay attention to, and it's called the amygdala. And the amygdala are two almond-shaped structures kind of in the center of the brain, kind of like right if you somewhere between your ears. And um, it's your body's fear sensor. It's what goes off when it senses something is in that you're in danger and it charges the rest of the body to swing into action to protect itself. And it happens very fast, and it happens before consciousness. Dan Siegel, who we shamelessly stole the hand model of the brain from, tells a story about going for a walk in uh, the Sierra Madres, west of Los Angeles, with his son. And he says they were walking along, and all of a sudden he stops dead in his track, and he's got his hand thrown out to the side. And it's only after he stopped, and his son has stopped, only at that point, does he see the snake 10 feet in front of him? Well, that's our buddy, the amygdala at work. The amygdala and the amygdala's buddy, the thalamus, sensed that there was danger and sent out the signal to the rest of Dan's body to stop and to protect his son before he consciously even knew there was anything dangerous about the environment. And that's something that's important to realize about the amygdala. It's very, very fast. And we all would probably be dead without it. But it's not especially accurate. If Dan had seen a rope left in the middle of the trail instead of a snake, the amygdala still probably would have gone off and gone, stop everything. If we wrapped our fingers around our thumb, we'd have a representation of the thinking brain. Now, the thinking brain is probably the part of the brain that you think of when you think about having a brain. This is the part of the brain that's in charge of rational thought, cognition, moral reasoning, language, facial recognition. Actually, most of the processing that happens around vision happens in the cerebral cortex. But there's one part of the cerebral cortex that plays a really important part of why resiliency works and when resiliency, when we get knocked out of our resilient zone.
And that's the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is right above your eyes and right behind your skull. In other words, if you do a face plant into your windshield, this is the part of the brain that you're going to destroy. So wear your seatbelt. At any rate, the prefrontal cortex is that part of the brain that's able to evaluate the danger signals that were sent from the amygdala and integrate information from the rest of the brain and figure out the context of that danger and how severe that danger is. And if the danger is not as severe as the amygdala's first best guess said it was, this is the part of the brain that says to the rest of the brain, calm down guys, it's actually not that bad. So you see how there's a conversation that goes on between your emotional brain and your thinking brain that helps to keep you in the resilient zone. But, and this is the big but, when you are emotionally overwhelmed, the signals between your emotion brain and your thinking brain become disrupted. You literally flip your lid. And so when we are really emotionally overwhelmed and the signals from the emotional brain and the thinking brain get disrupted and that conversation stops, that's when you're most likely to get thrown out of your resilience zone. When this video is over, think for a moment, if you're willing, about the dumbest things you've ever done in your entire life. And try and think back and remember when you did those dumbest things. Were you calm, cool, collected, and totally rational? Or had you flipped your lid? Which brings us to the subject of trauma. Thank you.